come on, give the Lord a hand of praise once again. You can do better than that. Give him the praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may settle down in the presence of God. You look much more beautiful. Amen. Tell your neighbor there is no creature like you. Say you look beautiful. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate the presence of all of you in this place. God is a good God. The devil remains a bad devil. Shout Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to appreciate uh, your coming and your faith in the power of the Almighty God to heal us and uplift us all the time. Uh, we come in his presence. What we want to assure you is that, is that if God be for you, nothing shall be against you. I said nothing shall be against you. Hallelujah. We talk a different language with the world. We, we can't say the same things because we don't read the same things. We don't watch the same things. We don't, we're not guided by the same things. Our laws are different. So there are quite lots of things that really determine on, on what makes us different even in our speeches. So um, don't, don't ever think when you say something and you are a child of God, the world will applaud you. The world will never applaud what comes out of the mouth of a, of a child of God because we don't have same sources. We're not controlled from the same source. I said we're not controlled from the same source. Hallelujah. And we don't have the same thinking pattern. We don't think the same. Our thinking is renewed by the word of God and guided by the word of the living God. And that's who we are. So we talk things based on what we believe. On what we believe. Scientists talk science, but we, as children of God, we talk the word. Shall praise the Lord. Shall praise the Lord. So you can't judge what I say with science. Because we we not operating in the same realm. Amen. I'm a preacher of the word of God. All what I'm going to say is based in this book. And the devil won't like it. Lift up your hands and shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says I shall put enmity between you and the serpent. You shall bruise its head and they will bite your heel. So that's the enmity that we have with the devil. When we come across the devil, he cries. Shall praise the Lord. Right. What we want to encourage you, children of God, is that uh, do not be afraid. We have the greater one walking with us. We will go through these things, but we won't die in the David says, even though I, I walk through the veil of the shade of death, I shall not fear any evil, for thou art with me. When God is with you, it's more than anything. You need God to be with you. That is just the only thing you need to be with you. If you can know he is with you, it's done. It's a done deal. Shall I praise the Lord. Say he is with me. 
I want you to say, greater is he. I'm not hearing you. Shout, greater is he. That is within me than the one in the world. Shout, praise the Lord. You have the greater one in you. Now, when we, we, when we talk like this, people don't understand. When we say he is in you, he is in you with the same power that he is with when he is in heaven. You, you're carrying the same power. It's not limited because he is in you. The things that he can do when he's seated on his throne, he can do when he is in you. That's why he says, whatever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven. Because he is great, not when he is in the Bible. He is great when he is in you. Shout hallelujah. So you're walking with the greater God. I said you're walking with the greater God. I said you're walking with the greater God. Amen. And the devil is under your feet. The Bible says he shall soon bruise him, the devil, and put him under your feet. You did not put the devil under your feet. It's Jesus that put the devil under your feet. Amen. Amen. So he won't escape. Because all the time he tries to escape your feet, Jesus says, hey, go back. So be encouraged. We'll have announcements after announcements, cafews after cafews. But Jesus is still the same. It doesn't reduce the power of Jesus in us. Amen. Amen. I don't know, but we have to encourage somebody. So I'll teach this message. We we'll wrap it, more especially the message of excellent giving. We're going to wrap it this Sunday. Then we close it next week Sunday before New Year. We'll be preaching what I won't be teaching. Because I want to give you a little break before we get into the functionality of a member. So I want to break and encourage you before we, we talk about how you're supposed to function. Do you understand? So next week and the other Sunday... I will be preaching. It will be fireworks. Turn to your neighbor and say, hmm, fireworks. Praise the Lord. So next week and the other Sunday, it will be fireworks. So in January 2021, we're talking about how you're supposed to function as a child of God. Wow. I am telling you, I am telling you, we're going to uncover things that the devil had hidden from you and you will begin to serve the Lord with all boldness because he is defeated. You will begin to serve God with all boldness because the devil is defeated. Did I say that before? Now I hate the devil sometimes I will say what I want to say to him before I want to say it. That's how I hate him. Amen. So today we, we're talking about excellent giving. And I am talking to you about willingness. That as you do God's work, as you do things in the house of God, do it out of all willingness. All willingness. Let us say willingness. The thing that encourages me is the way you, you come to church. And please keep coming that, that same way. That's the only way you can grow. You can't grow from home. Because the message to make you grow, it's here. Shall I praise the Lord? The Bible says he has chosen some to be apostles, some to be evangelists, some to be prophets, some to be teachers, some to be pastors. 
for the edification of the church. So pastors operate and serve and serve the Lord and do the work of the Lord in church. So you've got to come here so that you receive that grace. Shall I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's let's do one or two scriptures before we before we 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 we, we read the scriptures we want to do this morning, and the good Lord will bless you. Um, let's first read Psalm forty. Psalm forty. This is just to encourage you. This is just to show you on how powerful the word of God is so that as long as you have this word, you know there is nothing, absolutely nothing that will come near you. Amen. Don't dig your grave while she's still alive. Psalm 40, we're reading verse 7, I said. Verse 7, Psalm 40, verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. Behold, behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. What is it that God is telling us? He's telling us that uh, this book called the Bible, it talks only about Jesus. It's written about Jesus. But he says, I come. Before we could listen to him saying, in the scroll of the book it is written about me. He says, I come. Behold, I come. Behold, I come. Let us say, behold, I come. Let us all say, behold, I come. Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. Now, somebody has got to understand and believe what is written in this book and live by. Because when we do that, it makes God to manifest in our lives. Now, God will manifest in your life at the level at which you understand. Or God will come to your life at the level at which you understand what is written about him. You didn't hear that. I'm saying God will come to your life at the level at which you understand what is written about him. He says, behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. In other words, when you take this book, read it or hear about it and understand it, in the same way you understand it, it is that same way that it will come to you. That's why this word does not work for everybody. <laughs> it works for all that who hear and understand it. And then he comes to you that way. He will always come to you in the same way you understand what you read about him. That's why I never doubt God. I can't doubt God because when I doubt him, I limit him to the level of my own thinking. My thinking is too small. To God. God is too big to my thinking. Do you understand what I mean? So when you believe you are actually, I don't know how, but you are stretching your thinking to the size of 
And I know this, I would not wish to say it the way I want to say it, but I want to say it just for you to understand. Because God will always be the same size with the way you believe. God is too great. God is too, your faith can get God into your life like that. Or like that. Or like that. Or like that. Depending on how you believe his word. Amen. That's why it does not matter what happens. I don't doubt God. 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 I believe God even when things are not happening the same way I believe him. And at times I believe God not for him to do anything. But so that he can be happy. For the Bible says without faith we can't please him. So at times I believe him. <laughs> because if you believe him, the simplest way to doubt, the simplest way to doubt God is to believe God to do something. Yeah, I, I, li I like when he says, hmm, because you're listening attentively. The simplest way that can make you to doubt God is when you believe God to do to do something. <laughs> but when you believe God so that he can be happy, he will do something anyway. You got to believe to please him. So when you believe to please him, you don't have the stress to want to see your headache going. Because the moment you begin to have stress, because the money you believe in God for is not coming. That's what we call doubt. Why are you doubting? You are doubting because you are believing to get things. I don't believe to get things. I get things as I believe. But I don't believe to get things. Shout praise the Lord. I get money as I believe. But I don't believe to get money. I believe to please God. And as I believe to please God, when he does his food like this, when he's happy, about my faith, money comes. Shout hallelujah. And when you believe to please God, you will never doubt. Because you don't look at your situation. You don't look at the waves. You know why Peter drowned when Jesus called him out of the boat? He drowned because he was believing to walk on the water. He was not believing to please Jesus. So he was believing as he was looking at the water and the waves. Ah, But we should go beyond that. We should come to a level where we say, I don't care what is happening around me, but I believe the word of the living God. Shout hallelujah. Remember, the Bible always <laughs> teaches us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When it says fix your eyes on Jesus, it's actually saying take your eyes off your circumstances. Because when you, you put your eyes on circumstances, you put your eyes on coronavirus, you will always talk about corona. But when you take your eyes off corona and fix them on Jesus, you will never see corona. <laughs> People will talk about COVID-19 all around you because they are a people of the world. But you'll be talking about Jesus. And they will ask, why are you talking about Jesus? That's the one I see. My eyes is on him. I don't see any other thing because my eyes is on Jesus. The author and the finisher of my faith. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 
Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. We don't have any other subject to talk about. We don't have any other subject to talk about. Because our eyes are on Jesus. I said our eyes are on Jesus. Our eyes are on Jesus. Even before there was COVID, we were already believing. You didn't hear me. I said, even before it was there, we were already believing. You can't teach us to believe now. You can't teach us to believe now. You can't teach us to believe now. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. When you walk like that, child of God, I'm telling you, when you walk like that, nothing will scare you. Nothing will scare you. The waves of the sea must scare everyone else except the child of God. Amen? Amen. 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 That's why I always encourage children of God, keep on planning about your life. Keep on planning. You know, doing business. Do think. Think big. You know, there are people who are planning their lives around COVID-19. You will wake up after two, three years. You find that it was there, but it never killed you. And what will you do? Because you are planning around it. Yet, you are greater than COVID. You are a... You, you people, you don't know that you're not the same as the rest of the people. You're not the same. You're not the same. Walking with a great God in you. Amen. You know, I've made it I've, I've vowed before God that all the time I stand before the children of God. The devil will always say, I made a mistake. I made a mistake to introduce this thing. Why is this man is still alive? Because all his followers will be taught the truth. The world wants you to be afraid and the devil wants you to be afraid because when you are afraid, you are easily manipulated. When you are afraid, you are easily manipulated. You can't think right when you are afraid. When we are afraid, we can be turned into beggars. I've never seen an inventor of a coward. I've never seen a businesswoman, a businessman of a coward. I've never seen a person that's successful and is a coward. All successful people are bold people. So the only thing that the devil can make out of you through this pandemic is to be fearful. Because when you are fearful, he can make anything out of you. And I encourage the church of Jesus to be as bold as a lion. The Bible says you must be as bold as a lion. Shout hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord. So you are alive and you will be alive. God will protect us. He never sleeps nor slumber. He's the keeper of Israel. The keeper of Israel does not sleep nor slumber. Amen. He shall keep you from all pestilences. From all pandemics. They will come and go. The Bible says a, th a thousand shall fall on your side, ten thousand on your right hand, but it shall not come near you. 
And when we say it shall not come here, we mean you shall not die of it. You shall survive all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. I said you will survive in Jesus name. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Because I've got a message to preach. You see, we spiritual people are not predictable. You can't say from here he will talk this, from there he will talk that. Because I come here and the Lord says, boy, there is somebody that I want you to inject faith. Stop what you're doing. Just put some bit of faith in the life of this person. And you might find I'm talking to just one person. Who is shivering? Amen. Amen. Say greater. It's he that is in me than the devil in the world. And shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's read Isaiah 1. Verse number 19. Verse number 19. Anything we do in church. We should do it willingly. Let us say willingly. Willingly. Let us say willingly. We must come to church. Willingly. We must sing willingly. Worship the Lord willingly. We must give willingly. We must serve willingly. We must obey willingly. Everything we do in church has got to be done when our hearts are willing to do so. And God blesses that. Shall I praise the Lord. Let's read. shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, other translations say, if you are willingly obedient, meaning if you are obedient as you wish to obey, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So, there is quite lots of things that we haven't been able to tap into in this world, or in this earth, or in this land. Lots of things that we were not able to tap into in this land, that we will only tap into those things when we begin to obey willingly. When you, you obey willingly, you shall eat the fruit of the land or the best of the land or the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. I told you all these past three weeks, listen to this very carefully. I told you in these three weeks that, that willingness is the highest, highest level to do God's will. Because you're doing it out of your own heart. You're doing it out of your own will. So it is the highest level to serve the Lord. Amen. And there is no law that can fight a person that is willing. That's why a willing heart is a very dangerous heart. When a person is willing can do anything. When a person is willing, can do anything, anything you think of, can be done by a heart that's willing. I can imagine if the church of Jesus can be filled with people that are willing on how much we can achieve whilst we're still here on earth. Did you know that if World Miracle Church can have can be filled with willing members, did you know that we can have a township of our own? 
a village. We can fill these premises with houses. <laughs> and we call it World Miracle Church Village. All members of World Miracle Church who do not have houses and they are renting somewhere, they can come stay in their own village. Decent. Air-conditioned. Singing with all pride because where you're coming from, you know, it's, it's a decent place that belongs to the kingdom because we have willing people. But if we the church is filled with unwilling people. We will keep on blowing fans. All the time. And still they don't give us the cold air that we need. Because we don't have willing people. People are serving the Lord as though they are forced. Amen. There is no organization that would be as rich as the church of Jesus. But the problem is we have members that fill churches. Some churches have thousands and thousands of unwilling people. Amen? People that are going to church but they're not willing. It's like somebody took a whip and said, you got to go to church. But if we were all of us willing, I'm telling you, the offering that you would take out of willing people, the offering that willing people can give, it's scary. That's why Peter and John went on the beautiful gate of the temple and they found that man seated there and they said to him, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give. They did not mean they, they don't have money. Those were the richest guy. The early church was the richest ever. You will remember that Peter and John, the, these two gentlemen, they had the business of fishery. A fishery company. Very successful guys. Amen. So when they said silver and gold we don't have, they did not mean we, they did not have money. They meant we don't give money like as these religious people are giving. Why am I saying that? Because in the temple on that day, in the temple of the day, the temple of that day, it was not owned by any other church. We would not have a temple that we will call World Miracle Church Church. <laughs> Hall or whatever you call it. This, you built it yourself. You know, if anybody comes to want to worship here, they've got to ask permission from the leadership of the church. Do you understand? Because you built it yourself. But in those days, churches were even built by kings. So it was not a church for a specific congregation. All churches that were there at that time were fellowshipping there. Basieri Sana Mkari. Others will come in the morning, they go. The other ones will come in the noonday, they go. The other ones will come in the afternoon. So the church of both Peter and John, the, it was going in the afternoon. After many churches have gone in. So when those other churches, when they come to the church and they found this man, they will give him sense because they were religious. So when Peter and John come, they says. No, no, no. We don't have scent. We don't give scent. That's what they were saying. That's why they said silver and gold. They didn't say money. They were actually talking about coins. We don't give money like these religious guys that have come before us. They said we give serious things. We'll first give you the name of Jesus. You rise. From there you'll see money. Because they had a willing heart. Do you understand? If you read about these guys, you'll find they will sell 
even their farms and their houses and they give the money to the church without anybody pushing them. But today, because we're not willing, we are doing things because of tradition. We're doing things because it's like we were born in families and we saw our mothers carrying sense to church. Even when your mother was going to church, your neighbor will give your mother 10 cents to go with, to go and give for them. So that's how you grew up. You grew up in that environment where everybody was stingy and nobody was willing to serve the Lord, even with their finances. Until when Paul, Paul that we're talking about is, is a businessman. He was a pastor, an apostle to the Gentiles, but as well he was a businessman. He was in the construction business. They were constructing tents. These big marquees that you see. These big ones were done by Paul before now. You understand? So this guy had a lot of money. He was so rich. <laughs> Amen. So he understands what he's talking about. He's telling you about giving because he knows on how it worked for him in his business. Hello. You understand what I'm talking about? So Paul says... Anyone who wants to give, he must do it willingly. And he must purpose in his heart that this is what he wants to give because God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Amen. So the question is, when I give willingly, the day I don't wish to give, where do I stand? Is it allowed not to will? After all, to will is not a command. Something that comes out of your own heart. So we don't talk about being allowed or not allowed when we talk about willingness. It's the highest level that pushes one to do things out of his own accord. Without anybody pushing him. Without looking into any scripture, although the basis would be the scriptures. So, this is exactly what happens. What happens in this case is like God takes scriptures and put them in your heart. And put them in your heart. They start working in you, these scriptures. And they work what? To will and to do. According to Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. If we have time, we'll read that, but we don't have time. The Bible says it's God that is working in you both to will. And to do. Can you give us a scripture? Let somebody read it for us. Philippians 2.13. Eh? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do. And how? How does he do that? He puts scriptures in you. He puts malaki in you. And when my lucky it's in you, it makes you to will and to do. But in this case, it's not like my lucky is holding a whip for you. It's living in you. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, Isaiah number 1 verse 19. It's the scripture we read. It says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But the question is, what happens if I'm not willing? <laughs> it says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So if I'm not willing, what happens? Now, when you are not willing, you fall onto the law. I told you, when you are not willing, you fall on scriptures that force you to 
to do it. And then you'll do when you are not willing. And that's not what God wants. God wants us to do when we are willing. But Christianity is about obeying God's word. And by any chance when you are not willing to obey, that's where you fall onto the law. That's why verse 20 of the same chapter, chapter 1 of Isaiah, verse 20 says something that I don't want to read in church because it's not good for you. I want to talk about willingness. I don't want to talk about when you are not willing because I don't teach you on not to will. I teach you to will. Praise God. But let me show you something for those that in case you won't wish to will. If by any chance you decide not to will, <laughs> let, me, let me show you your, your scripture. The scripture that I read before is for those that are willing. And let me show you a scripture of those that are not willing. Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Brr. That's not for you. It's for those that <laughs> and <laughs> refuse to will. Those that rebel. Some of you should know that rebellion is as good as witchcraft. How many of you know that? That the Bible says when you are rebellious, you are operating in the same level with witches. It's not me. It's the scripture. Maybe let's, let's see if we can find that scripture. It says rebellion is as good as witchcraft. Okay, read it. For rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. And stubbornness is as the iniquity of idolatry. This is not me. It's the word of God. When you are rebellious, you and a witch will be judged with the same judgment. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> do, do you understand what I mean? <laughs> For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. In other words, Baloi, rebel, they will be shoved to one place. So, don't you think it's better to be willing? Huh? So that you're not <laughs> operating the same. You know why the Bible calls rebellion as good as witchcraft? You know why? Everywhere where there is a lot of witchcraft, there is no development. It's the same. Everywhere where there is no development, it's because there is a rebellion. The members are rebelling to the leadership. They will never move because there is rebellion. When the man of God says, Because there is Christmas. Mudimu testa your willingness. When I live a Christmas, Christmas will always be there. Look at me, say, next year is alone. The 25th of December, the every year. Amen. 